Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, welcome. And uh, Thank you. At, at, we might at times disagree on issues. It's okay. My favorite saying is democracy at work, uh, but I will never, ever doubt your sincerity, your honesty, your openness Thank to you. work with us, and uh, your dedication and hard work, not only for you, but the, the rest of your staff. And uh, you. I very much enjoy working with them, because we're going to disagree on a couple things today. <laughs> but, uh, Great way to preface I, it. I, I was not going to talk about Medicaid or Medicaid expansion, but I can't help myself when I listen to the discussion. <laughs> Uh, on the present Medicaid program, and, and you know, much of the, a lot of the discussion is about the cost of what Medicaid is. But when you look at the population of the present Medicaid program, almost a million are children, 550,000 or so are disabled, 220,000 are people who are aged in long-term care, and as been mentioned, there's where the savings, I think, potentially is for a lot of the savings. Uh, almost 100,000 are chronically ill adults, and I think the rest of the population I would call moms trying to take care of their babies. And, and you know, I know we need to focus on the cost, but I think it's in, important for all of us to remember that Medicaid is absolutely life-saving and critically important for all that population. And uh, we have to remember that. And uh, I, I didn't want to get into that, but I just thought it important to bring that up. And uh, what I'd like to focus on is the, uh, the Human Service Block Grant. Sure. And uh, I have a copy of uh, the report that you put out recently mm -hmm. on Act 80 of the Human Service uh, Block grant. I don't know if you have a copy of that or not. I don't have it with me. Uh, you know, and 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 it's a you know very nice report. Uh, and and as I look through the pages, the one question that I have is you have all the statistics and how good it's doing. And my one question is, compared to what? We have nothing to compare what you have in this report to from the prior year. And as we have the discussion about maybe some of the providers are coming around and starting to change your mind on the Brock Grant, <clears throat> I'm going to refer to a letter just a couple weeks ago that was sent to uh, uh, Chairman Adolph, uh, and I believe all the other members, Democrat and Republican, got it. And the letters from the Behavioral Health, Intellectual Disability, and Autism Coalition of Pennsylvania. And the letter, the first paragraph says, we are contacting you because we have serious concerns about the implementation and evaluation of the pilot block grant program. And that's mental health, that's intellectual disabilities. And as I talk to the people who provide drug and alcohol services around the state of Pennsylvania, they have similar and identical concerns. <coughs> Uh, I, I would love to get you a copy of this letter, and I'm going to, going to get you a copy, because they, they ask, I believe, nine questions that I, the, the questions and concerns that I have. And, and just a couple of them, uh, when you look at this report, uh, the annual report should include data on services delivered prior to the implementation of the block grant. I mean, how do we evaluate how this block grant is working when we don't have any information on the prior year. DPW's annual report should include data on specific services delivered. The impact on the services and people in the program giving up funds should be reported by DPW. I mean, this report is glowing. And, you know, you've got stuff in here, and they added, and they did this, and they did that. But if you add on to a program and you expand the program, you've got to use additional dollars from somewhere. Where are those additional dollars coming from? I mean, I, it, you cannot tell with this report. Uh, number of individuals served, and we talked about that a little bit. I mean, you've got a, a, a really nice chart of all the 20 initial counties in the, that were in the block grant program. Number of members served. I mean. Where's the prior data? Is that more or less that were served prior to the block grant? I mean, I, I come from a business background, and you know, and it, you know, if you start a new program if you do something different, 
you've got to be able to to evaluate what was before and if it's if it's working or if it's not working. I mean, the administration money. I mean, I've got a really serious concern, and that was one of the question is how much additional money is going into administration, and. Uh, if I go, and I'll just take one county in particular, I'll just go to Allegheny County. Um, and the chart that you have for the county, and it says the administrative costs are included in each of the categorical allegations, however, are reported in the Human Service Development Fund category. I mean, we can't break out the administrative money and see how it's being used. I mean, are counties... I don't know, hiring more people? Uh, are they taking money away from critical services to hire people? I mean, is that part? We can't tell. I mean, there are a lot of questions that I, I hey, and, but no secret, I don't like block granting right. of human services. I mean, I just don't think you should be forced to pit these people to fight amongst each other for these critical services. And might I remind everybody that the money was cut 10% three years ago. So they're, they're, they're doing this block grant with 10% less money, which was about 87 or $88 million. Uh, at, I, I want to give you a copy of the letter. I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond, but good. <laughs> this letter is really good. I mean, it, it really asks the, the eight or nine questions that I think we need answered. We have to evaluate how this is working. I, let me ask you for first question. Uh, is it is it the administration? Are you going to explain, expand the block grant in this year's budget? I mean, I think you have 30 counties in it now. Is it, do you anticipate language in one of the bills to expand the block grant further in the 30 counties? Um, Representative, first, I, you're right. We we've got to keep working on this one, as you know, because my perspective on it is really from the perspective of having been back in a county for three years when I left the General Assembly, and then as the Deputy Secretary for the Office of Children, Youth, and Families, I got to travel all over the Commonwealth and meet with various counties. I saw a lot of the same issues and concerns I had when I was back in York in these counties. I hate to call it York, but I saw the same thing. Let me first say that um, the block grant was is not a program. And maybe that's the first area that, that might be helpful if it's understood. It's a funding mechanism. And a funding mechanism means that this is just a way to get the dollars to the county without them having to put it in different silos. And there are, I, I agree with you, there's some counties that are going to do a really good job, Mr. Chairman, and there are other counties that may not. When I was the Human Services Director in Newark, I called Estelle Richmond who was one of my predecessors and said, could you please allow me to use the funds I'm not using here? here?" And, and just to give you an example, let's talk about child welfare cases, something I know very well. In a child welfare case, most of our children in Pennsylvania are being placed because of parents' drug and alcohol. The second highest reason why children end up in placement is because of mental health. Why wouldn't we address that from a holistic perspective? Why, you know, I remember a day in York County where our mental health filed, no, children and youth sued mental health, talk about costs, sued mental health to pay for a, a child who was neglected and had mental health issues. It doesn't make sense. If I have extra money in one category and it can meet the needs, my issue was really, why not? So I know we have to talk more about this. As far as administratively, every county has a cost allocation report. Every county should have that pulled out. And we really need to look at county allocation for human services. Because to be honest with you, we send a tremendous amount of money to counties for human services. And not all of it is spent as efficiently as it needs to. And we do pay for things all the way from human services all the way up to county commissioner's offices. So there's a lot more to this issue that I think is something that the General Assembly and our office can address. You asked about why we don't have data. We don't have all the data we need because nobody really took into account. And, and it's not about people served. It's about quality. It's about what did we do, outcomes. If we're just counting people, that's not going to get us to anything that's meaningful. And as far as the 10%, I, I'll tell you what, um, Representative, 
if there are concerns out there, I haven't heard them. When I've traveled to counties, I've said, has this been a problem for you? I'm not hearing it has. As far as expanding, the question about are you in, do you in We would love to open it up to any county who is willing to get in, who is able to come in, and who is prepared to do so, yes. Uh, do you anticipate doing that in some language in one of the uh, the budget bills to, uh, to open I, it up? I figure your best friend's going to do that, so. <laughs> right. I, I, the, the one point that you just made to me is a reasonable point about lapse money going over and counties being forced but that, to me, is a simple change administratively in allowing the counties to use the money in the following fiscal year. I actually have a House bill, House Bill 806. We moved it out of committee, and, you know, it's been sitting for a while that would actually allow the uh, counties to do that. But and I'm going to close with this, Madam Secretary, and I, I'm going to get you a copy of the letter. I don't get know if you've copy. seen Have you seen this letter? Uh, I have not. And, okay. you know, that would be very helpful if when things come in that you think we would benefit from seeing, if you send it to, over to us, or if the providers yep. that have concerns contact us, we can talk with them. We can intervene. We won't intervene, but we would sit down with counties and help negotiate, work with them. That's part of our responsibility. We, we, need, we need to have a comparison in how this is working. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't anything, know how you can evaluate something unless you can compare to the prior year. I mean, I, I just don't know how you can just say it's working if there's no information to compare it to the how it was working before. Uh, could, I, there's nine questions here. I mean, I, I, I'd like well, to, have, we, uh, to get uh, Mr. Uh, to Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, we're not going to get into those nine questions right now. Oh, no, not right <laughs> now, but I'm going to I'd ask, ask the secretary to give us answers if I give okay. you the letter. Absolutely. That, that would, that, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much.